Hey, in this movie, we're going to be looking at some of the new features in Ableton Live 11 and how you can use them to create more interest and variation when working with MIDI instruments. Uh, we're going to start by working with MIDI notes in the clip editor, where you can now randomize velocity values and also have velocity ranges. And then we're going to get a bit more advanced and look at some modulation options and also new features for racks on the device chain. So let's get started. So going right from the top, I'm going to right click and insert a new MIDI track into my project. And double clicking on the header will always make sure that you're displaying the device chain down at the bottom so you can now easily import a sample in. And I'm going to do this from Loop Cloud. So I've done a search for bass one shots. And a little tip here when you're importing samples, you might want to auto tune them to C all these bass samples will be in different keys. So if I click on auto there and have C selected as the key, you can hear now. All of the bass samples have been retuned to C. So all I have to do now is drag out this processed version and it will drag out the one that's been repitched. So if I now go back to live, drop it onto the device chain. Now I know that when I play a C, we hear a C. So it's just a quick tip there for making sure your samples are in tune. Okay, so I'm just going to change the color of my track to something a bit less gaudy. And now let's double click to create a, an empty MIDI clip and let's sequence in a bass line. So I've got the little headphone switch activated there, which means that when I play keys, you'll be able to hear them. So let's go for a run of Fs here. So to do that, if I hit the B key, it will switch to the pencil tool. And a little tip here, if you hold down the Alt key, then it will draw a run of whatever note you start off on, even if you move the mouse up and down. So it can be quite a quick way to do it. So there's my Fs. Um, I hit B again to go back to the normal cursor. And I'll just draw in, or rather drag some of these notes to different pitches to create a bit more variety. Go up to a minor third there. And then, and then a minor third again, and then just come down one chromatic note. Uh, and these ones are nice and syncopated. So this one's on the beat, on beat two, but these ones are on the swing beat. So the ones that create the shuffle in a groove, slightly more interesting rhythm there in the middle of the phrase. So let's have a listen to that. If I want to shift them all up and down, I can just click in the clip Command A to select all, and then I can use the keyboard keys, up and down arrows to move up and down. Cool. So at the moment, it's sounding like a sort of horrific machine gun. So to start to get a better sound, what we're going to do is use the filter on Simpler. So going to the filter here, you can hear when I bring down the cutoff frequency, because as default it's set to a low pass or high cut filter. When I bring down the cutoff, it rolls off a lot of that top end to create a more sort of pleasing sound. But we don't want to lose all of that high end. So what we're going to do is go to the filter, which is on the controls tab here, and we're going to click on envelope here and then bring up the amount. What that does is it then uses this envelope here to modulate the cutoff up and down over time. So that every time a note is played, the cutoff jumps up and then slides down, which just makes the transient or very start of the note a little bit brighter. So the larger the envelope amount and then also the envelope parameters like the decay time set here, Will, will define just how long those high frequencies persist. We'll keep it around there for now. So now we've got it sounding better, let's start to add some variation to it. And we're going to do this by adjusting the velocity values 
of MIDI notes in the clip editor. Now, if you're new to production, then velocity value is just some MIDI data that is connected to each one of these notes here, normally entered when you're playing a MIDI keyboard by how hard you hit the keys. And you can see in Live 11, it's a little bit different. Instead of having bars, you've got these sort of horizontal lines, uh, but they're adjusted in exactly the same way by dragging them up or down. Now, one new feature you've got down at the bottom here, if I hold down the Command key or Control on a PC and I adjust the value, you get this new range appearing. What this means is you can set a velocity range and then every time that note sounds as the loop rolls around, it will switch to a random velocity value within that range to add even more variety. So it's a pretty awesome new feature. And it's also controlled by this range box here, as you can see. You can reset it by clicking on the end. But instead of adjusting the bars manually, what we can do is use this randomize button to do it for us. Now this gets applied to whatever you have currently selected. So as I've just got this one note here, it's just gonna randomize that one. So I'll just undo that. Um, and if you don't have anything selected, then it will apply it to all of them. So now with nothing selected, I hit randomize, keeping it set to max. So it works across the whole range. So applies the largest amount of randomization. We can now get completely random velocity values. And if I play the bass line now, we can hear what that does. So at the moment, it's making the level go up and down, which is normally what velocity does as default. But you can turn this off on the instrument by going to the amplitude envelope, which on simpler here is on the controls tab. And on all instruments, you'll normally find somewhere around the amplitude envelope or the final gain stage on the instrument, uh, a parameter that allows you to set how much velocity affects volume. So here we can see it and it's set to 35%. So we can just turn that off set it to zero. You can hear now the level is completely consistent. Now you might wanna have just a tiny bit on there, one or 2% or something, just so it's a little bit more natural. But typically with a baseline, you're not gonna want it to go up and down too much. So here's where it starts to get really interesting. What we're gonna do now is use velocity to control a different parameter on the instrument. A popular and effective one is the filter or rather the filter cutoff. So if we go to the filter section, you can see there's this velocity amount here. And if we increase that, what we'll get is the cutoff jumping up and down according to the velocity values. So it creates loads of interesting variation there as, it, as the filter's opening and closing. So it's in, in essence, sort of jumping up and down. And what we can do now is we can use the randomize feature here to create all sorts of different grooves. So if we maybe play our bass line along with the beats now, we can work out the kind of groove that we're after. So you can hear what a difference it makes to the groove. Um, and what we could do is actually duplicate it a couple of times. Click here so we're not selecting any notes here and then randomize them all. So rather than having a repeating bar phrase there, we have completely random velocity values across the whole thing. And that will keep our baseline constantly kind of fresh and rhythmically interesting. <laughs> Nice. And of course, if I want to add even more randomness to this phrase now, I can of course just up the velocity range amount, which applies a little bit of upwards range to all of the notes so that every time they roll around, there'll be a slightly different value uh, within that range. 